Hello, my name is Professor Hudson, and you are about to view narrated PowerPoints for Chapter 7 on Photosynthesis. This chapter covers the following topics. What is photosynthesis? The light reactions, how is light energy converted to chemical energy? The Calvin cycle, how is chemical energy stored in sugar molecules? This chapter also deals with some alternative ways of performing photosynthesis that some plants use. Photosynthesis. Energy within light is captured and transformed into the chemical energy of carbohydrates. The equation for photosynthesis is often written as six carbon dioxide molecules plus six water molecules in the presence of light energy will be converted to glucose and six oxygen. This equation illustrates that carbon dioxide is used to make the carbohydrate and water is broken down to release oxygen. The electrons and protons from the water are added to the carbon dioxide to generate the glucose. Energy from light drives this endergonic reaction. Autotrophs are organisms that synthesize their own macromolecules, usually from sunlight. Plants would be autotrophs. Heterotrophs are organisms that gain energy from eating other organisms. We would be an example of heterotrophs. This slide shows an example of several photosynthetic organisms such as flowers, trees, kelp, algae, um, and certain uh, organisms in the Protista kingdom and some bacteria. Leaves and chloroplasts are adapted for photosynthesis. Photosynthesis in plants takes place in chlorophyll containing organelles called chloroplasts, most of which are contained within leaf cells. The mesophyll cell in the middle of the leaf houses the chloroplasts. So just like we have different cell types in our body, plants have different cell types as well. Chloroplasts contain chemical reactions that are able to convert energy and sunlight into stored energy and sugars. Both the upper and lower surfaces of a leaf consist of a layer of transparent cells called the epidermis. So the epidermis pr protects the surface of the leaf and helps to regulate things going in and out of the leaf. This slide goes into more detail in the photosynthetic structures of plants. Photosynthesis in plants takes place in the chlorophyll containing organelles called chloroplasts, most of which are contained within leaf cells. As mentioned previously, the chloroplasts contain chemical reactions that are able to convert sunlight into stored energy of sugars. Some of the various parts of the leaf include their epidermis, as mentioned previously. Also, the outer surface of both epidermal layers is covered by the cuticle, a transparent, waxy, waterproof coating that reduces the evaporation of water from the leaf. Inside the leaf are layers of cells called the mesophyll cells, where the chloroplasts are located and where photosynthesis occurs. Bundle sheath cells surround the vascular bundles which lack chloroplasts in most plants. Photosynthesis in plants takes place within chloroplasts, most of which are contained in mesophyll cells. Chloroplasts are organelles with a double membrane enclosing a fluid called the stroma. Embedded in the stroma are disc-shaped membranous sacs called thylakoids. This slide is showing a close-up of the stomata. In figure A, it shows the stomata open where gas exchange can occur. 
and be it shows the stomatic closed. Leaves obtain CO2 or carbon dioxide for photosynthesis from the air through pores in the epidermis called stomata. Here's a close up of how the chloroplast is arranged. Each chloroplast is browning by a double membrane and contains fluid called stroma. The membranous thylakoids stacked in a grana are interconnected so that there is a single thylakoid space. The light dependent reactions of photosynthesis occur in and adjacent to the membranes of the thylakoids. Reactions of the Calvin cycle that capture carbon dioxide and produce sugar occur in the stroma. Photosynthesis consists of two sets of reactions. The photo in photosynthesis refers to the light dependent reactions that capture energy from the sun. They take place in the thylakoid membranes. They produce ATP, NADPH, and oxygen. Synthesis refers to the light independent reactions that produce carbohydrate. This occurs in the stroma. It uses ATP, NADPH to incorporate CO2 into organic molecules. Here is another slide showing an overview of photosynthesis focusing on what happens in the chloroplast. During the light reactions, chlorophyll and other molecules embedded in the chloroplast thylakoid membranes capture sunlight energy and convert some of it into chemical energy stored in the energy carrier molecules ATP and NADPH. In the reactions of the Calvin cycle, enzymes in the stroma use CO2 from the air and chemical energy from the energy carrier molecules to synthesize a three carbon sugar that will be used to make glucose. Light is captured by pigments in chloroplasts. This figure shows the light spectrum and the chloroplast pigments. Each of the pigments in the plant absorbs different parts of white light. The sun emits energy within a broad spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. The electromagnetic spectrum ranges from short wavelength gamma rays through ultraviolet, visible, and infrared light to long wavelength radio waves. Light is composed of individual packets of energy called photons. The visible light has wavelengths with energy strong enough to alter biological pigment molecules such as chlorophyll A. Chlorophyll A is a key light capturing pigment molecule in chloroplasts, absorbing violet, blue, and red light. Green light, however, is reflected, which is why leaves appear green. Chloroplasts also contain accessory pigments which absorb additional wavelengths of light energy and transfer them to chlorophyll A. Chlorophyll B absorbs blue and red-orange wavelengths of light missed by chlorophyll A. Carotenoids are accessory pigments that absorb blue and green light and appear yellow or orange to our eyes because they reflect these colors. In autumn, the more abundant green chlorophyll breaks down before the carotenoids do, revealing their yellow color which is in the summer masked by the green color. Now let's take a look more closely at the light reactions. This is where the energy of sunlight is harmonized and converted into storage molecules for making the carbohydrate later. The light reactions occur in association with the thylakoid membranes. The thylakoid membranes contain many photosystems, each consisting of a cluster of chlorophyll and accessory pigment molecules surrounded by various proteins. Two photosystems, photosystem 2 and photosystem 1, work together during the light reactions. Each type of photosystem has a unique electron transport chain located adjacent to it. These electron transport chains each consist of a series of electron carrier molecules embedded in the thylakoid membrane. Within the thylakoid membrane, the overall path of electrons is as follows. Photosystem 2, two electron 
transport chain 2 to photosystem 1 to electron transport chain 1 to NADP+. The steps in the light reactions are as follows. Photons of light are absorbed by pigment. Molecules clustered in photosystem 2. The energized electron is ejected from the chlorophyll molecule. The reaction center within each photosystem consists of a pair of specialized chlorophyll A molecules and a primary electron acceptor molecule embedded in a complex of proteins. The electron acceptor passes the electron on the first molecule of the electron transport chain 2 and it is then passed from one electron carrier molecule to the next, losing energy as it goes. Some of the energy is harnessed to pump hydrogen ions across the membrane and into the thylakoid space, where there will be used to generate ATP. The energy depicted electrons leave the electron transport chain 2 and enter the reaction center of photosystem 1, where it replaces an electron ejected when light strikes photosystem 1. Light energy striking photosystem 1 is captured by its pigment molecules and funneled to a chlorophyll A molecule in the reaction center. This, is an, this ejects an energized electron that is picked up by the primary electron acceptor of photosystem 1. So through this process, we're generating basically ATP energy molecules and collecting electrons and protons through NADP to become NADPH. Now the ATP NADPH that we have created in the light reactions will later on be used in the dark reactions to make the Calvin, to make the uh, carbohydrate. This is a close-up of the electron transport ch chain or electron transport system showing the series of uh, protein carriers in the thylakoid membranes. Uh, which uh, carries the electron through the chain and this generates a proton gradient that turns on an enzyme that makes ATP. The process of using a proton gradient to turn on an enzyme in order to make ATP is called chemiosmosis and it occurs in three steps. As the energized electrons travel along the electron transport chain 2, some of the energy it liberates is used to pump hydrogen ions into the thylakoid space. This pumping creates a high concentration of hydrogen ions inside the space relative to the surrounding stroma. Hydrogen ions flow down its concentration gradient through a thylakoid channel protein called ATP synthase, generating ATP from ADP. The generation of ATP from ADP plus phosphate resembles the electrical energy obtained from water flowing downhill and driving an electrical turbine. ATP synthase captures the energy liberated by the flow of hydrogen down its concentration gradient and uses it to drive ATP synthesis from ADP plus phosphate. This will conclude section 7.1 and 7.2 of chapter 7 on photosynthesis. In the next segment we will cover 7.3, the Calvin cycle.